assistants Nick and Joe A surgeon reporter of his drone For the cassette that is our only home But in the meantime The play the greatest clips they VCR party! It's the show where we watch VHS tapes. We got a shitload of them here. I'm Joe. That's Nick. That's Steve. That's George. And uh, boy, we got a fun one for for you today, don't we, guys? Absolutely. It's okay. it's uh it's yeah, it's chock full of good videos. We just got back from a couple of trips. We were in Seattle, uh, then we were in Indianapolis most recently, and uh, picked up some new VHS tapes. A lot of people brought tapes to us uh, on the road. Joe, do you have anything to show off handy? I have uh, learning to tell time and learning to calendar. Looks like, you know, could be good. Probably a kid's video. Um, I think this... uh, I was thinking like during the spring forward fall back, maybe we could play that video, you know, yeah, learning yeah. to tell time. Right. That could be helpful. Here's uh, another one. The U style scunchy video. Learn from the pros instructional video, video informative, uh, this informative video here. And uh, whoever gave it to us said uh, tedium for Joe. Hunky host for Nick says ponytail like a thousand times and lots of dead eyed women. So there we go. <laughs> Sign uh, me up. I think we got a winner. Yeah, we got a winner here. Uh, I got a few folks gave us this is um, Salty, who Salty is um, this like uh, Bible with white gloves. I think his name is Sal- Puss Salty. Yes, Puss Salty's. Yep. Sal- and we have a lot of Salty videos. We don't have the Salvation Celebration, the movie. It's don't a full movie. So that's a good one. Um, we had a bicycle safety video that we watched with Kyle Mooney. Here's one uh, in that same series, Kids Save the Video, hosted by Triamenic. So oh, yeah. the uh, cough syrup. Uh, Wait, it's hosted by Triamenic? <laughs> well, I guess it's uh, sponsored by Triamenic. Oh, okay. So, yeah. Okay. I, thought I thought you meant a guy in a suit. That it's was, that's what I was ho- hoping for. Yeah. It's hosted by Joe Flaherty and Andrea Martin and Meshach Taylor from Designing Women. So those are the hosts of okay. that. Oh, uh, trio. Found a Beekman's World out in the wild. This is, hmm. uh, uh, you know, we often reference Beekman's World as having a, an aesthetic of Dutch angles and puns that uh, was aped a lot in the 90s. I feel so, like they, they were the pioneers of that that Dutch angle style and the snap zooms and the yeah. wackiness. Yep. And uh, the example I always give is here's another hair raising experiment experiment. And then a wig comes down. You know, there's a lot of that. So I'm excited to revisit the actual show. And then this one, um, too, I'm excited about this is freestyle dance. Mm. Now anyone can learn the club dances of the 90s. So just in time. Who put that out? That's not Scimitar, is it? No, it's it's uh, by more entertainment. Okay. And by the way, I'd like to point out that's the uh, NWA straight out of Compton font right there uh, it is yeah whenever is. you see that yeah that's another montage we've got to start yeah um that the was nwa no straight up huh that was no mistake when they were like we're like we're gonna get in on that people <laughs> are buying nwa are also gonna be buying freestyle dance uh-huh yep cash right. in yeah get hip uh, get fit get funky all right yeah let's get all three uh w- let's get all three with this found footage festival classic <laughs> You caught me with my pants down, but no one sells carpet or waterbeds for less. Than- All three what? Oh, uh, the, the three things that you said. Oh, yeah, yeah. Fit, funky, fun. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, that's, I should have that, been clearer. <laughs> the reason, this is a long walk, but I this is just kind of, you know, you'll see how my brain works. I've been watching the show Andor, uh, the Star Wars show on Disney+. Plus. There's this character uh, played by Eben Moss Backrack, I think is how you say it. He's from the... Um, the chef show the bear uh oh sure yeah uh he played the cousin great actor but his character's name is skeen s-k-e-e-n in andor so whenever it's on the subtitles and they're calling him skeen and um he, he plays a big part in the episodes and i thought of this uh this uh, vhs tape called learn the An- art of uh, dancing dirty which came uh, in the wave of uh, dirty dancing uh, but without having to copyright it and uh, you'll see why i had made that connection in just a minute Skeen, yeah. <laughs> so there it is 
Oh, I like that st <laughs> still too. Uh, yeah, Skeen Ya yeah, is the musical. Uh, how many? Star. How many E's does that Skeen in Andor have? Is it uh, just he two, only had it... two, but oh, okay. yeah, wow. this one had Boring. four, and hey, Ya had yeah four A's as well. Yes. Also, there's a Kurt with a K I R T. The hell's going on? I mean, both titles here are pretty eye popping. So I never even noticed that Kurt because my eye was yeah. always drawn to Skeen Ya. I've never met or <laughs> heard of Kurt being spelled with a, with an I, but uh, let's just watch the rest of. Wait, wait, um, George, <laughs> can you add this to your uh, to find list? Skeen yes, no, I've I've got another window open here. I, I think <laughs> I found him on Facebook. Oh, um, let's just, just let's let's finish the video. Let's. Finish oh the no, no, he oh, belongs let's... to a band called Sex Cadillac. So. Oh wow! <laughs> Seems important. Is this for real? <laughs> wow! Yeah. I All couldn't right. come up with that. More details. More details. Let's watch the video. Okay. Establish full body contact or hip contact. The man circles his pelvis counterclockwise around his left leg, comes to center, then circles it clockwise around his right leg. And then With you the start to scheme. Contact. <laughs> Circle the hips counterclockwise. Keep your weight centered between scheme, your feet. Scheme, Notice yeah. the upward accent on the forward That's part it. of That's it. You're a real sex Cadillac. The man starts this move <laughs> by bending his knees to drop down just a little bit pulling the woman's, the woman's hips in very here. tight against him. <laughs> the Afro tilt. It just has a this corpse. is possibly the most familiar movement that most couples know, right? What do you think of, of his uh, pleated khakis? After you have coordinated the movement of the pelvis, uh, the underwear uh, line? Hands can travel all <laughs> over as desired, yeah. and you can create you really a get to see the look of your own. And yeah. remember, relax and have fun. <laughs> I mean, I like the soundtrack by Ski and Ya. So uh, that was a timely tie-in, but in a very strange way. Uh, yeah. Any excuse really to show, learn the art of dancing. I would call that more of a long walk. It was. Yeah, yeah. 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 It was. But All right, George. I, I'm proud of it. George, tell us more about Sex Cadillac. Well, he's the saxophone player for Sex Cadillac. If this is him, I'm going <laughs> Sex Cadillac or Sex Cadillac? It's – oh, it is Sax Cadillac. Oh, okay. Sorry, I'm kind of disappointed, but um, – here, here, let's see here. No, just, Sax Cadillac is pretty good as well. There, there's, there he is. No oh, way. Kurt oh, Kurt Miller. Okay, but that's oh. not Skeen Ya. Yeah. Oh, Skeen Ya is the song. Title, yeah. Oh, well, there's it's a musical score by Skeen Ya. No, musical oh, so score was... Skeen Ya, courtesy of Kurt. Oh, courtesy oh. of Kurt Miller. Oh. Yeah. Well, Look, score... if I found Skeen Ya, I would be out of here right now, <laughs> driving so, to wherever he is. So the musical score... <laughs> This is, is yes. Skenia, but courtesy of Kurt courtesy Miller. Courtesy of Kurt Miller. Yep. So this is a mind the blower. The score is this that whole song, I guess, is called Skenia. Yeah. I gotta be honest. I'm disappointed that the band isn't called Sex Cadillac. I don't know. <laughs> I'm disappointed that the composer isn't named Skenia. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> Nick, we've been showing that video for 15 goddamn oh. years, and we always thought the guy's name was Skenia. <laughs> been living a lie. We have been. We've been seduced by Skeen Ya and totally ignored Kurt Miller. <laughs> you were staring Kurt, at the pleats. Kurt Miller. Yeah. We were staring yeah. at, we were can mesmerized we, by the pleats. Can we see Kurt Miller one more time? <laughs> this feels yeah. like a Letterman bit. We're going to go. <laughs> Morty, can we see us? Uh, <laughs> can we see Kurt Miller again? Yeah. Wait, can you uh, click? Can we see some of his photos on Facebook? I'm, I'm afraid. Oh, is, that, is this a. Uh, oh, yes. Uh, I like the looks see. of Kurt Miller. I mean, how okay. many how many Kurt Millers can there be? Okay, so there's a <laughs> oh, oh yeah, George, you yeah. got to get in touch with him and ask him about Skeen Ya. The song. Well, see now I'm I'm worried it's yeah, he's keyboards. in Montana. What if he's not? He, he plays keyboards, so that would make sense because that was a keyboard song. Yeah, I gotta be honest, I don't see Skeen Ya coming out of this guy. Oh, really? oh he's got one that's... of those headsets. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I could see Skeen Ya. This video is also like 30 years old too. So yeah. 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 Um, wow, we did a lot of we got a lot done there. Should we just call it a day? Yeah, that's it. <laughs> Let's go uh, home. Good night, everybody. We call the episode "Sex Cadillac" and slap a slap thumbnail on it. We're done. <laughs> that's it. <laughs> um, Steve, who are you selling out to today? Uh, I am selling out to. I'm going to cover my screen for a second, probably leave a smudge. But uh, I am selling out to Melinda Patrick Calvillo, who is um, working on a project called "Sink or Swam: The Web Series." Uh, Anna Benmo Riley and Patrick Cavillo created a web series which focuses on the character J.J. Estrada, um, who finds uh, that after her hasty divorce, all she has left is a demeaning job and motivational speaking company on the brink of a scandal. Uh, they're looking to crowdfund, 
excuse me, um, they've already gotten their goal for the pilot, but they're looking for uh, a stretch goal to find ideal locations, focus on marketing, and you guys know anything that you're trying to do, whether, you know, especially in, you know, a pilot or something like that, it's just expensive. So yeah. uh, please try to help out, support the Melindas uh, that support us, and go to www.seedandspark.com slash swink. Let me go, oh boy. Uh-huh. A lot of flubs here. <laughs> slash sink or swam to contribute and watch their pitch video. And one other thing for Melinda's in the Atlanta area, they're going to have a uh, table read at the Disco Church and Photo Studio on October 22nd. The event will start at 7 p.m. and uh, tickets will be on sale. Follow Sink or Swam series on Instagram, Facebook for more information, and we'll put some of the links uh, below. Disco Very Church. Cool. Yeah, it does. That's like a, a church one, I'd right? consider going to. Um, that's in Atlanta. Yeah, and it's a uh, the live table read, 7 p.m. Hmm. on the um, big Sunday. This sounds cool. That. I'm going to yeah. toss some money into it. I think yeah. we got to. I think we got to help out for you know, sure. It's, it's, it's so tough, and I love that we have so many creative Melindas, and we know when they've been given anything, what the uh, magic they've been able to put forth. So hopefully, exactly. uh, Patrick and company will be able to as well. We'll definitely toss into that one. So, yes, everybody do the same. Uh, and support the Melinda's who support us. Uh, Steve, I think you only had like three or four flubs on that one. I think that was pretty good. Really? Yeah. You, you just had a flub that almost calling him George. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you, you caught that, huh? Okay. Uh, um, hey, I want to show a nice thing that uh, our buddy Tim Harrod, the curator of the Bastard Tapes, our podcast that collects weird music, uh, he sent just a, a, kind of a holiday or a, a Halloween gift for us. Uh, I thought this was a nice thing that it's really short and I uh, wanted to share it with you guys. Mm. And thank you, Tim, for, for uh, giving us this. Here it is. I haven't seen this yet. I don't know. No, this is uh, Tim's Halloween surprise. Oh. Good evening. I like it. Yeah. Pretty good. I thought that was nice. Yeah. That's I don't need any Hirsch. context. I just nope. like Judd Hirsch's Dracula. I'll watch him do anything. <laughs> Tim Tim also sent me a few masks for Mask Me Another. That was a oh, very, very kind of him. Yeah. It's uh, America's number one game show right now. George's mask-based game show. We'll be playing round two this Saturday on Saturday morning cartoons. So play along. It's and, genuinely uh, fun. In. Yeah. Genuinely uh, fun. I Do you have any uh, Scrappy Rat this week? Yeah, I do. You want to see it? Yeah, let's see oh. more of her mixtape. Okay, so Scrappy Rat back in the 90s uh, had a tape in her VCR and would hit record, pause, record, pause, whenever something good happened and has like six hours of gold on this on this tape uh, what's it called the ducky and quacky show tape and uh i'm gonna just show you a minute's worth here that I, it takes me two seconds to make these because there's so much good stuff on here they're dense um just been they're dense densely. they're so dense yeah yeah so thank you scrappy rat for donating this tape here we go scrappy rat mixtape <laughs> Yes, 911. Yes, this is an emergency. Put me on hold. They do glow in the dark, so when you Studio wake up in the morning, hard. Uh, you'll, you'll know. It has it all. This tape has it all. Beanie and sea salt. Why do you collect this stuff? Um, it makes me feel good. It will take many hours before this entombed, air-breathing creature emerges. This should have been a deathbed. Real tortoise shell, but don't tell Doc I was selling that on the air. Hundred bucks. Now nah, we won't put a dime in the calculator. Here's another one of those pig stickers. You want anything, Grandpa? Maybe I should. All of a sudden, my mouth feels dry as a bone. <laughs> what is this? It's like an outfit you wear while fishing with your grandpa, doesn't it? <laughs> Short shorts watch, and a halter top. Watch this last part. It's really weird. Okay, so yeah. she arrives. It's like saving Private Ryan. 
<laughs> there we go. Let's scrap your oh, mixtape. Wow. Uh, what what show do you want to guess this was from? Uh, what movie? No, it's a TV. It's a, oh, it's yep. a TV show. Baywatch. Baywatch. Uh, yep. exactly. Got the aesthetics of uh, yep. Baywatch. Yeah, that's good. And it, By the it, way, it, I, I think I'm just one life decision away from having been that Beanie and Cecil collector. Uh, <laughs> There's still time. <laughs> because I, I do like the show Beanie and Cecil. I was obsessed with it for a while. And uh, I, oh. I, I've thought of collecting some Beanie and Cecil stuff before. I mean, yeah, that could be you. Yeah. I could see you on a Bravo show explaining why you like a thing. But, yeah. <laughs> so why yeah. do you like this? Why do you collect Beanie and Cecil? <laughs> um, you never got you to know, hear the you answer. Know what? You know, I don't know. <laughs> uh, what's the, um, there's an option not to? Wow. So, yeah, that's another great minute. That is just, again, we should just end the show. Only scratch the surface with Scrappy right. Rats mixtape. Let's get into it. We are required, though, to uh, at least show you some flying windows. Michael S., who, as you recall, stepped in dog shit at Chevy Chase's house. Um, who could we, yeah, Joe, I got to upload that still. I forgot to. Yeah. I, I got to upload that. That's going to be a viral sensation. Yeah. Uh, we Joe edited together this uh you know, video of uh, Michael telling the story of the time we were shooting a video at Chevy Chase's house. He stepped in dog shit and it was awkward for all involved. And uh, he sent some flying windows over from a Dutch soap opera that he watched in the 90s. I don't know why he was watching a Dutch soap opera, but he's Dutch. Yeah. Oh, he's OK. Actually, that yeah. explains it. Yeah. Um, so here's a I guess they're like scrapbook flying windows. Michael described them to us. It's a Dutch thing. Yeah. Ah, that's why I didn't get it. You can actually see a Brooklyn Dutch flying window. It's the craziest thing I've ever seen. <laughs> a Brooklyn style flying? A Brooklyn Dutch style flying Dutch. Dutch. Dutch flying window. <laughs> I mean, it feels like every single crap book photo is going to fly you know, out at some point. Wait, can you hit? Pause. I wonder. I want to ask Michael next time I see him, like what they call Dutch ovens. Do you think they just call them ovens over there? They, they call them Brooklyn call ovens. Them, oh, they call them Brooklyn ovens. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> um, do you think? Do you think Sorry. they have a term for Dutch? <laughs> Sorry, I didn't realize you weren't done. Uh, <laughs> what was the question? Do you, Do you think they have a? Do you think they know about Dutch ovens over there? Do you think they know what they are? Yes. Do you okay. mean actual duck, Dutch ovens, or <laughs> what? What is your definition of an actual Dutch oven? <laughs> the cooking of a uh, instrument. Oh, that's the first. Oh, see, that's the second for me. That's the second definition. The first definition is that when you go underneath the covers. Okay. You force your partner under the covers. Yeah, I don't know. I, I'm. I think. I think they know what both uh, definitions are. That's my guess. Well, let's have Michael on again. Then we'll do another video with him. So you think, all right, great. You saw all the windows that are going to fly in the intro, but no. Nope. Goody Titchden. Oh. They're seriously doing every <laughs> Everybody in, in the country. Oh, yeah, this is all Holland. This is how they take a census. Yeah. <laughs> Just watch the intro to the soap opera. This looks like a good episode of Goody Ditchin. Yeah. But then, so Michael was like, they, they rebooted the soap opera in 2019, and he said they kind of kept the same intro, but it's more aggressive. Oh. And he, he thought it might be too aggressive, and I agree. They kept the flying window. It's going to cut somebody's eye. Oh, yeah. It's dangerous. Flying too fast. This is like that version of Let It Be <laughs> on the beach. Oh, I forgot about that. Yeah. I'm going to rewatch that sometime. Yeah. Yes, that was so good. That could be up for video of the year, actually, because, uh, you know, hey, we're only a couple of months away from. I don't think that was this year. I think that was last year. Really? Okay. Yeah. We'll, we'll have to do the accounting on that. But yeah. uh, let's, uh, uh, while we do that, let's get into uh, some uh, raviolis this week. All right. Come on, let's see your raviolis. Show us 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 your raviolis. Okay, let let me start with um Hunktober. Um, it's Hunktober trying to trot out as many Hunk videos as possible. 
I have one. Oh, I don't have the video with me, but it's the uh, Cosmopolitan. You know, like the uh, Sports Illustrated, they did their swimsuit calendar featuring babes in swimsuits. And um, Cosmopolitan tried to get in on it by doing the men's version. And Sports Illustrated also would always have the making of the swimsuit calendar video. Cosmopolitan also had their making of the Cosmopolitan men calendar. I found the one from 1997 at a thrift store, finally watched it for Hunktober, and uh, you get to meet the men and uh, mm. find out uh, behind the scenes of taking this uh, sexy calendar. So happy Hunktober, everybody. If you've ever wondered what goes on behind the scenes of a glamorous calendar photo shoot, here's your chance to find out. Just people standing around, it looks like mostly that's kind of behind the scenes. Cosmopolitan's 1997 Bachelor of the Month calendar features 13 of the sexiest guys you've ever laid eyes on. I have a request. Anyone want to take? Now, Joe, they're show they're, they did the uh, scouting for this at New York City's Fashion Cafe. Remember going to eat there when we first went to New York for the first time? Yes, vaguely. Yeah, what? we went. This is in like the fashion district, and um, at the time, I had a big thing going for Elle McPherson, and she owned this cafe with like two other supermodels. So we went. And they had a <laughs> runway. The gimmick was that they had a runway where they would serve your food. It was so, <laughs> so stupid. stupid. It lasted like oh, six months, but enough for uh, I guess Anna Wintour or I don't know whoever does um no. Who does Cosmo? I forget. I don't know. Helen Gurley. Um, yeah. Anyway, she, they they did the auditions there. So I I remember though walking down that that uh, catwalk and just turning heads. Two nineteen year old kids from Wisconsin. <laughs> yeah. Well, look at here they are. <laughs> yeah, that, that, that could have been us. That's what I exactly what I looked like. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Uh, we could have been there for the audition if only. I have a request. Anyone want to take off your shirts? Do you want me to take my shirt off? If you want to, completely optional, but. Just thought uh-huh. I asked. Woo! Okay, shirt's off. I'm ready. What do you do? Do you remember the episode of Get a Life where uh, Chris Elliott goes to the handsome boy modeling school oh, yeah. and they, they ask him Sparkles. to take his shirt off? Yeah. <laughs> and he feels used and uh, it's worth a rewatch. Yeah. I miss Keen's stuff. stuff. He said, I'm a, a ski in- instructor. Yeah, I'm oh. a ski instructor. Yeah. I'm- they could have, I think, could have sprung. It's cosmopolitan, right? They could have uh, sprung for better audio. George is so upset he left. Oh, where'd he go? Where's he George? Went, he went to watch the full video. Okay. What do you do? I miss Keen Stock stuff. I'm an economist by trade. What? What? I'm a budding writer. <laughs> I don't I think like he said guy. he was a communist by trade. <laughs> <laughs> I like this budding writer. I think, yeah, he's a hunk. I'm a budding writer. One, two, three. I'm a struggling model and actor uh, and a high school basketball coach in New Jersey. I'm a nice guy. Sean Maratia. Grab him, pick him up. Maybe sit down on the rock or something, lay down for some, lean back. Oh, I think those are the hot dogs back then, too, because of Frasier. Oh. I think those are the dogs that everybody had. Jack right. Russell's. Yeah. yeah. Something, yeah. lay down for some, lean back, have him lick your face. Just play around like that kind of feeling. Have him participate with you, but then you got to start directing your energy towards me. See how it goes. See how you feel. Just start off, warm it up. I have the secrets in my hand. They are roast beef a ball and a towel and we're putting roast beef in Sean's ear so that the dog will go after him and lick his ear and get a nice loving cuddly shot good good so did you hear the secret it was putting roast beef in Sean's ear <laughs> so <laughs> the, that's how the dog that's what the dog is eating out uh, of his ear right now okay that's the secret, yeah. roast beef? well it, I bet the dog like bites his towel. ear too though I mean it looks it appears to yeah I don't I think feel like he'd want to I think you'd want to put peanut butter, wouldn't you? I mean, isn't so that the thing? Like, yeah. But yeah. It's not yeah. a hat any. Roast I don't beef? Know. You want to help tell Cosmo how to do their job. I think you'd be job. a better hair and makeup artist for hunk shoots then. Yeah. Or I think Marlene. so, too. You're fired, yeah. Marlene. She's doing <laughs> it wrong. Towel. And we're putting roast beef in Sean's ear so that the dog will go after him and lick his ear and get a nice, loving, cuddly shot. Good. I think some things you don't want to know behind the scenes. If you're trying to, like, yeah. think this is sexy, maybe you don't want to know all the sausage is okay. made. It, it looks like the dog's eating roast beef out of his ears. It doesn't look it like does. he's like giving him a kiss. Not at all. Yeah. Maybe the photo turned out a little better. Good. If you'd like to contact your favorite Cosmo Bachelor, 
feel free to write to him at Post Office Box 6105, Nevada, California. There are no guarantees he'll answer, but who knows? You could be the one who captures his imagination and who puts his the heart. roast beef in his ears. <laughs> You could be the one who captures his imagination, but you won't be. You could be the roast beef that's in his ears. No, you could be the one who captures his imagination and his heart. You never know. This could be your year. Unlikely, though. Not going to happen. There's a little bit of hunks for Hunktober, so... Uh, we got our quota met, but we're not done yet because Scott Miller from Strange Tape Zine and the Strange Tape Strange Show sent me a video called Canadian Muscle Hunks. And mm. we're going to go out uh, whenever we you know, say goodbye tonight. We will go out on that video. It's, it's hot stuff. I had no idea that Canada had hunks. This is news to me. I didn't either, but yeah. yeah they... I thought it was just an American thing. I thought it was just an American thing. No, nope, but they're oiled up in wrestling, so look forward to that, everybody. Um, all right, I want to show this video. So this was in our movie in our movie section over there. Uh, I popped it in. I think we were testing a VCR or something to see if the VCR actually worked. I popped this tape in called Dream Stealers. Okay? It's 18 mm -hmm. minutes long. It's from 1991. And I popped it in. I was really confused as to what it was. And rather than telling you everything that I know about it now, I'm just going to let it unfold for you guys, and you guys can spout out your theories what this actually is. Um, but it's 1991. It's from Provo, Utah. And um, I'm going to do it in two parts. And uh, it's 18 minutes long. I sh I've shaved it way down. You might have some questions because, you know, there's missing context. But uh, feel free to jump in and uh, ask questions. Tell me your theories. Here we go. Here's Dream Stealers Part 1. Look for clues. There's clues everywhere as to what this is. Okay. But we assumed it was a movie when we filed it. Just, yes. Okay. I mean, it looks like one, right? Mm -hmm. It's called Dream Stealers. And yeah, there's a guy with a baseball bat. And, yeah. Right. Um, okay. All right. But now watch this part. Like, what? Here's a really, here's the first confusing part. It's called Dream Stealers 2. <laughs> <laughs> that was in the tape was Dream Stealers <laughs> 2, but it says huh. Dream Stealers on the, uh, okay. on the outside. All right. So, all right. But maybe that's a clue. When you're sleeping, they will come. Now, also, they have money. It's decently shot. The editing isn't terrible. Uh, and you'll see they have a lot of extras in this. So... Uh, the plot thickens. Well lit. Ooh. Where'd he go? I don't know. Don't let him get away. See, now, when I first popped in, I thought it was a spoof because I thought it was Field of Dreams with Freddy, you yeah. know, with like Nightmare on Elm Street. They're combining the two, and I thought it was like a spoof short film. Mm -hmm. um, Is it a commercial? Okay, Steve. Okay. Commercial. I'm, I'm not going to I'm not going to answer. Huh? Commercial for mattresses, maybe? Okay, well, let's take a look. I think I have a, I have a guess, but. Give them to us. No. No, if you take my dreams, I've got nothing. You're already nothing. Frank, you always be nothing. Give us your dreams. I think this is religious. Okay. You guys got... I had that thought too. <laughs> What's the matter, Frank? I left the convention. I, I was excited. I knew I could be successful. I was flying high. I was dreaming big dreams. But then they were waiting for me. They want my dreams, Blake. You gotta help me. From the looks of you, Frank, they already got your dreams. Just exactly what they say to you, Frank? Well, they said that I was too old to make it. That it was too late for me. That I'll never be a player for New Skin. That I'm kidding myself. It's impossible. It, it won't work. It's illegal. It's, it's all right. Careful. It's okay. There's oh. something to live for. Marketing scheme. <laughs> Jesus told me so. Yeah, it's, it seems like it might be a pyramid scheme. So if it's impossible, it, it won't work, it's illegal. It Listen carefully just told to me, Frank. I'm taking Dizzy out of the game. He'll help you catch the vision to become a complete ball player. Tell me, what else did the Dream Stealers tell you? So now they're leaving the baseball game to go uh, to, to help him, I don't know, to help him do something. Okay. 
They said all those ideas Blake talked about at the convention wouldn't work. And forget it. All the stuff at the convention didn't work. <laughs> the Blake talked about at the convention wouldn't work. They said all those ideas Blake talked about at the convention wouldn't work. And forget it. Come on, Lord, be a chap and slow down. Roger? You mean that's Roger Bannister? That's right. One week from today, on May 6, 1954, he's going to run the mile in four minutes. First man to ever do so. See, that's Roger Bannister who ran the mile in four minutes, and the Dream Stealers are trying to tell him to stop, but he's not stopping. Okay. <laughs> uh, shook the camera. What's that? It yep. shook the camera. All right, there's part one of Dream Stealers. All right, what are your theories so far? All right, my guess is that I have two guesses, but I, uh -huh. I, I'll just go with my first one now. I'll make my second guess after the second part. Okay. Is that it's um, it it's a makeup for Halloween called New Skin that does horror effects, and it's a demonstration of that. Okay. Steve George, what do you think? I'm gonna go with the uh, like the Herbalife type uh, thing where it's like a marketing. You gotta buy it. It's new skin. And they're going. Okay, George. You got yeah, I, I mean, I think I think uh, those are correct. But just to have something different, I'm gonna say it's some sort of religious video where new skin is what you get uh, for loving God. Like he <laughs> replaces your skin, and like the guy, the people chasing you are melting because. Oh right. Okay. So like. Um... What is it called when? What is it called when the uh, snakes they shed their skin? Was that called uh, the the shedding? Sh yeah, shedding, malt yeah, malting or something. Yeah, so it's like that, right? Yes. Okay. <laughs> okay. Born again. <laughs> exactly. Born again. Yes, exactly. All right. Okay. So will All we right. find All out? Will it be revealed? And... We will. Okay. We will on part two. So you, uh, yeah. What do you? What do you got? So when it we're in the the peak fall season right now, and when you think of fall holidays like Columbus Day, Grandparents Day, Halloween, and Thanksgiving, what is the hardest thing to do for fall holidays? What's what the do hardest th thing what do you, to do? Or what do you think about most when it when it comes to fall holidays? Like pumpkin flavored things? Nope. Breaking Survi leaves. Survival. Oh. <laughs> just just the idea of surviving these holidays. Is, oh right, right, right. Is the thing that everyone thinks about because you're lucky to be alive after Grandparents' Day, honestly. Um, so this is uh, I've shown some. Uh, like I think I did the uh, the ones for Christmas here. They all always have craft ideas and things you should do. They have summer holidays, of course. But uh, since we're in fall and we're uh, Halloween's right around the corner, I thought we would do um, a little bit of just generic fall and Halloween crafting and. Uh, I don't know, activity ideas for your family. Okay, what's the hunk situation like on these? Zero hunks. Okay. Thought it was hunktober. They can't all be hunks. Hi, I'm Judy Bird And I'm Kathy Peel. When the nip of fall comes in the air, everyone wants to pull out sweaters and go outside and enjoy the crisp weather and the fall colors. Here's an outdoor activity your whole family can enjoy together. Organize a neighborhood scarecrow contest. Appoint judges and ask each participant to donate a small entry fee for a prize. <laughs> I Nick, you should do that. Win. Nick, I you should do that in your uh, in your uh, complex in Queens. Oh yeah, put this out in the <laughs> like the middle corridor. I don't know yeah. if this uh, Spider-Man wearing a propeller beanie probably should have won the neighborhood contest. <laughs> but I would say this is last place. Doesn't he kind of remind you of George a little bit? A Just lot, actually. Kind of. Yeah. Don't you kind of see George in that, like a little bit? I I've been told often that I seem like an inanimate object that is dressed up to look like something. <laughs> and then the propeller beanie is really what seals the deal on that. Then have yeah. neighborhood yeah. families make and display creative scarecrows in their gardens or front yards. One year we want to smoke turkey for a creation like this. <laughs> She want to smoke turkey. <laughs> Congratulations. Yeah, well done for a robot scarecrow. All right. When the frost is on the pumpkin, Halloween and children's parties are just around. What do you think about adults who say pumpkin? Well, I was the exact same thing. Wasn't there a, a Satanist video where the... Yes. So one guy referred to pumpkins yep. as pumpkins. Yeah, in a serious way. <laughs> we got to watch that again. With the Halloween pumpkins. Um, yeah. <laughs> 
I believe it was caught in the satanic web was the, the video. I'll, I'll look that up again. And, yeah. and he was like a police officer, wasn't he? Or, so, yeah, or an investigator yeah. or something? And he yeah. kept calling pumpkins pumpkins. pumpkins. Okay. <laughs> the frost is on the pumpkin. Halloween and children's parties are just around the corner. But instead of the traditional emphasis on witches, devils, and dangerous tricks, there are lots of positive ways kids can have fun. How about reliving oh. the days of yesteryear with a wild, wild west rodeo party? Oh. You can have it in your own backyard, family room, or garage. Sorry, you can't be a ghoul this year. We're having a rodeo Children party. Children love to dress up, so invite your guests to come trucker? dressed as cowgirls, cowboys, or even a cow or other ranch animal. But here's my favorite. I ain't talking. My gums are flapping. <laughs> So one per everybody else is a cowboy. That but then there's one person dressed as a cow. Love to dress up. So invite your kids yeah. to come dressed as cowgirls, cowboys, or even a cow or other ranch animal. But here's my favorite: chocolate cow chip cookies. The kids think these are wonderful. And you'll have about two dozen cookies chocolate for cow a chip castle cookies. of hungry cow mm -hmm. hands. And make sure you use real cow shit. <laughs> Christ we in a cow shit you. here. And like, who wants this? Just kids screaming in a barn? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we're, there's four childless people here on, on the show, so I guess we're, yeah. maybe, maybe parents are like, oh, this seems like a lot of fun. A bunch yeah. of screaming kids in a garage. No, a bunch of jaded. Yeah. Maybe this is a living nightmare. <laughs> <laughs> We wish for you a glorious autumn, and we yeah, can't Yeah, there's not a lot of dads around in that. No. Wait, what'd you say? Was, I thought it was Don Johnson for a second, so I, oh, I left so that close. in, but no. Well, wasn't Dan uh, Johnson the Olympic runner? That's uh, Dan Jansen. Dan Jansen. <laughs> How do I know that? I, I don't know. Two, though, and yeah. Don Johnson and Dan Jansen, we have it. But anyway, that's uh, how to survive the fall holidays. And don't think I won't be pulling this out for um, Halloween and um, uh, I don't know, whatever other fall holidays there are. Thanks. To help everybody survive because we might die, right? We might die otherwise. Yes. Okay. Um, all right. It's time for part two of Dream Steelers. And by the way, is this not the perfect October video to play because yeah. there's baseball and Halloween and like scary things and, and baseball? Like, I mean, slam dunk. Nice my, work, Joe. My second guess is that it's a um, a, like a pyramid scheme, like Steve was saying, but it's for like um, a, a acne treatment plan kind of thing. Uh, OK, that's what news. All right. Is. I'll say that um, one of you guys are right. Like one of the one of the things that I heard so far is correct. Okay. All right, here we go. All right, so now he's walking around. It's like a Christmas Carol with Scrooge. Uh, he's walking around, showing him different the future. He's showing him uh, the past with uh, the guy who ran the four minute mile. Now he's going to the future. It gets a little scary here, guys. I don't like the feel of this place, does he? What are we? This is Skid Row, Frank. It's the year two thousand thirty-one. You mean these people didn't have any dreams? Oh no, they had dreams all right. That's all they ever were is dreams. See that? Year 2031. You see that? See that thing? Oh, it's a flying uh um... Yeah. So, what, what is it? Uh, uh I thought what, it was does a it say something? Did, did, you say? did you say cow you thought it was cow shit? No, I thought it was a fish head. Oh, oh, fish. <laughs> oh it's I guess it says police. Uh, oh police, yeah, it's a police thing. Yeah, it's a <laughs> Please oh. hover, hovercraft, yep. yeah. Well, they they dreams dreams all, that's all the ever were is dreams. Who's the old man? Well, I hate to tell you this, Frank, but that's you. No. The dream stealers got to you, Frank. No. They made you sleep. It won't happen. Everything. I won't let it happen, Dizzy. Take me back. I I'm ready to play. I will dream, Dizzy. I will work. I will succeed. I won't listen to them, Dizzy. I won't listen. Please take me back. Please, please Frank. take me back. Frank. You you see, I can see the players. I can see. I know. We should sell these jerseys. Yeah. You're ready for. And you see, it says new skin on the. Yeah. The, he's playing two. for the. Yeah, he's playing for the new skin team. You're ready, Frank. You can be a big hitter with new skin. You can be a big right hitter back. with new skin. Okay. He's gonna step to the plate. But look at the Dream Steelers. They don't think he can do it. I don't think you can either. Are they saying that we want a batter, not a turkey platter thing from yeah, there? Uh, is that a, this, yeah. a dream stellar line? Yep. <laughs> Do 
see, right? see the ball, but you can hear a whistle. Give it up, buddy. You'll never get off this guy. <laughs> Uh-oh. Strike two. Not looking good. This is Dizzy. This is the Dream Stealer. This is Blake. It really goes out of tear here with like the believe it in your dreams to dare to dream. If you don't uh, dare to dream, you'll believe the dreams that you don't dare to dream. That about says it all, coach. Thank yeah, that's how <laughs> that about says it all, coach. Plain <laughs> refuse to quit. They're champions. That about says it all, coach. Thank you. There are a lot of viewers out there that would love to hear your advice. Do you have a word for them? Actually, I have four. I think about the values that are important to you. Way more than four. Believe in yeah. yourself based upon the thinking that you've done. Dream 13. about what you want to become based upon your belief in yourself and dare to make that dream a reality. <laughs> okay, that was, that, was, that was 83, yeah. <laughs> dare to dream with new skin. Which is what? Well, I looked them up, they're still around. The guy who is the manager his name is Blake. That's the st that's still the CEO of New Skin. It is an Herbalife thing. It is like mm -hmm. a, a pyramid scheme. You get people in to do, and it's like, yeah, it's like acne stuff and and lotion and shit like that. But they kept talking about like, well, you just watched the seminar, or, you know, you were just at the convention, and now, cause see, here's here's my theory. I think that they probably had people would show up to the conventions and they'd go home and they wouldn't sign up, mm -hmm. so they wanted to say like, hey, look, there's going to be people out there telling you not to live your dreams right we're here to tell you live your dreams like don't listen to those people listen to this so then they probably like ushered them into the movie theater room and played them mm -hmm. this movie like we're gonna have a movie we're gonna have popcorn and uh and then i don't know i mean they're still around today so maybe they're uh maybe it worked yeah you know my dad would uh, organize sales meetings for a uh a living and i it's not dissimilar to if you had a bunch of potential sales people there and then you would play them this video, but then give them one to take home as well. You know, like that's yeah. maybe the VHS copy we found. So um, fascinating. I did yeah. not, I would not, was not expecting it to be that. Yeah. There's one part where they go into the house of Ray Kroc from McDonald's and they watch him negotiate a deal. They go to Thomas Edison's house. Uh, it's, How it's, long is it? It's 18 <laughs> minutes long. Like, that's and it's really, lot. it's really ambitious. So, wow. all right. Yeah, dream, dream, here's Dream Steal. I guess Dream Stealers 2. Yeah, Dream Stealers too. <laughs> right. and you you have a lot of movies where there's only a sequel, right? Like uh, <laughs> like yeah. um, the more more beefcake or whatever. Well, we have the oh yeah, we do have Cooking with Beefcake two, which there's never an original, and the Venus two. Was oh yeah, the masturbation device. That there's I, never a Venus one. I have what about another skier one. Skier size. Was there a one or there wasn't an original, oh. but we don't have it. Yeah, right. Nick, you know what we we have that's a sequel that doesn't have the original Little Marines two. That's Remember right, Little Marines two. Yeah. We yeah. should, oh, we should watch Little Marines too. Film sometime. festival of, of only sequel movies. Just sequels. Yeah. <laughs> I'm on yep. board. Start with the sequel. All right. That's um, show right. your raviolis for this week. Show us your raviolis. Show us your raviolis. Show us your raviolis. <laughs> hey, real quick, before we get into cyber videos, I wanted to mention, we mentioned it before, but uh, we have a Roku app now. So if you have a Roku box um you can uh, just type in found footage festival you could be watching us right now on that device yeah and uh, it's a good way to watch on your tv if you don't want to like stream from youtube on your tv so 
And I heard uh, from four people this week that were actually watching it on that. It was like, oh, yeah. I, I love watching it on here because, you know, it's on demand. You can watch our episodes on demand. Like if you missed one, you can watch well, it there. One of our viewers, John, just kind of basically volunteered to make the app for us. So, yeah, support the Melinda's support us. Let's uh, subscribe to the app, get some downloads and and uh, yeah, grow, grow it because it's a cool new audience we can reach. Um, OK, let's get into some cyber videos on the Internet. This is where we show you videos we didn't find on VHS, but uh, usually uh, on YouTube or other uh, other internet uh, video sites. Um, let's start with Steve. Uh, are you still going with Jock Shams? I am doing a weird mix-up this week. It is uh, uh, part found footage festival classic, part Jock Sham, and it was made by Melinda. Uh, Tim Poitevin uh, made it, and basically, I think the other week I was showing... Uh, a Bobby Knight golf video where he keeps freaking out and we compared it to Jack Rebney. So he did a little, a little bit of a mashup. His version is like four minutes. I just cut it down and uh, uh, it's a little bit of over a minute, but I think he's going to post either in the Melinda verse or somewhere. He'll post the whole thing. So, Ooh, all right. On okay. Moment. Oh shit. Fuck me. Cock sucking motherfucker. I got to read it again because my mind is just a piece Flying of window. shit. Is going to be very helpful in keeping you from falling down, you big dumb son of a bitch. Economy Plumbing can help you with anything you want to do in the bathroom or the kitchen. Take a crap. Uh... <laughs> the line is, I fucked up the word rear. Oh, fuck me. We will help you play with your game your way. And if you watch us late at night, we'll help you play with yourself also. <laughs> We're trying to enable you to play better golf, enjoy it more, stay away from home more often, not have to put up with all the bullshit your wife gives you. I don't want any more bullshit any time during the day Good at it. from anyone. That includes me. I don't think you realize how fucking pissed off this makes me. It's going to be very hot. I know, and I'm trying to fucking leave on a three fucking week trip tomorrow. It's going to be very uncomfortable for everybody. Well, then you fuck with it however you have to. I'm done. Stay tuned following the news for Sam and me. So, yeah, just <laughs> must have been a great work set, you know. Oh, Fun yeah. Around, just laughs all day on both of them. Peanut butter and chocolate, really, ah. isn't it? It's like a, a, like wine and cheese. It's a, yes, together. Good they, fact, they put uh, roast beef in uh, Bobby Knight's ear to get that last shot. Is that how they got that? <laughs> wow. That's how they do it. Behind the okay. scenes. Yeah, the making behind out. the scenes I got, yeah. Uh, hey, I'm not doing uh, I Am Jesus Week because Tim sent me a cyber video that is really good, and it involves tedium, and I haven't done a tedium corner in a while, so let's run the graphic. This is a, this is a, a corner inside of a corner, so make a wish. Hmm. Here it is, Joe's tedium corner. And uh, this is... Not from the same Tim that made the Bobby Knight edit, right? No, no, no. This is a different Tim. This is uh, Tim Herod again. Oh, okay. Yeah. Who gave us the uh, Judd Hirsch gift. Nice. Judd Hirsch Dracula gift. This has this particular video has nothing to do with Judd Hirsch or Dracula. Um, I had some requests to bring back Excitement Corner. And uh, oh, so yeah? I might, might have to go looking through some of the uh, speedboats and explosions Frankie! videos. Ah! Yeah, so this is the cyber video edition of Joe's Tedium Corner. You remember, like, I would always start off every show with Joe's Tedium Corner, like, in the early days, and it just seemed like a terrible way to start off the show. You want to start it off with pep. You want to introduce new people into the fold. No, we're starting them off with tedium. Yeah, uh, but, no, I, I br but I, I brought we... that up, but uh, you weren't receptive to my feedback. <laughs> but it did inspire Excitement Corner. Yeah, that was my to only get viewers back. Course. Exactly, but we should have probably started with Excitement Corner, then did Tedium Corner, but whatever. Uh, it is what it is. Here we are. Um, all right. So this is uh, Tim said this. He goes, this eight minute music video is, in theory, supposed to familiarize kids with over 200 world nations and partially rec partially recognized states. But an AI would be ashamed to have written it. Somehow it has 15 million views. And then I looked at it and it has very few likes of those 15 million views. Not a lot of people hit the like button on there. Mm. Um, 
and they don't tell you how many dislikes anymore. So, but uh, yeah, here it is. So this is a, a song for kids about all the countries in the world, every single country in the world. That's been in my head all day. We are the countries of the world. Most undisputed sovereign states, but you'll soon learn all our names of the, the countries in the world. And they Come do every single sing goddamn with country. All the countries in the song. I'm Afghanistan, I'm Albania, Algeria is my name, and I am Andorra. Angola. Buckle up, it's exactly like this. <laughs> wow. said, how is a kid going to learn about idiot? Like, okay. Uh. Here in Tigua and Barbuda, I'm Argentina, and I'm Armenia. Name's Australia. A lot of countries sound the same. Austria. Catchy, isn't it? Republic of the Congo, Democratic Republic of the Congo, Costa Rica, Croatia, Cuba, and Cyprus too. I'm the Czech Republic. I'm Guinea Bissau, and I'm Guyana, Haiti, Honduras, Hungary, Iceland. Just spouting them off now. I and by the way, I, t- I took liberties. Like I added to this down, yeah. so they're they're missing all a bunch, but. Uh... I'm Indonesia. I am Kuwait. Kyrgyzstan. <laughs> countries of the world Macedonia <laughs> and I'm Madagascar I am Malawi and my name's Malaysia welcome to the Maldives my name's Mali and I am Malta Marshall Islands here I'm Mauritania Mauritius <laughs> is my Rwanda nothing gets in that's it's always what I thought Rwanda would sound like, too. <laughs> I am Rwanda! <laughs> he added, like, a couple syllables to Rwanda. Yeah. I'm Rwanda, Nuts and Kids and Nevis, and St. Lucia. I feel, like I, I feel like I only maybe know, like, seven countries. I'm like, what the heck? I've never heard of half these countries. Yeah. <laughs> like Is this, specs. How far do you think they would get alphabetically before you would confess to the crime <laughs> or you'd let, before you'd, you'd let your hostages go right yeah <laughs> they're coming Saint out <laughs> and Saint Lucia, Saint Vincent and the Grenadines, Samoa. we are the countries of the world San Marino, San Tome and Principe, Arabia, San Name's Tuvalu. I am the Ukraine, United Arab Emirates. I'm Zambia. All right, here we go. Home stretch. I am Zimbabwe. The rest are partially recognized states. I am the <laughs> 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 the rest are partially recognized states. Oh, oh, like Cramming a lot of syllables there. <laughs> All right, here we go. Listen again. Bombay. The rest are partially recognized states. I am Abkhazia. We're the Cook Islands. I am Kosovo. Nagorno Karabakh. The name's not you. I'm Northern <laughs> Cyprus. Harare, Arab Democratic Republic. And Somaliland. We are the country. Of the world. <laughs> Most undisputed sovereign states, but you'll soon learn all our names of the country. 15 million views. Jesus. Not a lot of likes. <laughs> <laughs> I will say, like, when, when Animaniacs did the, the state capitals song, yeah. and then and the, uh, they did, um, yeah, state capitals and one other one. That I, I actually do think back to those, but there's no, that song, how long is that video? It's got to be like 15 minutes long. It's like nine minutes long. Yeah. yeah. It's like you're never going to remember that. The, the, the theme, the it's not catchy. It doesn't stick in your head. No. Yeah. yeah. Republic of Congo. Yeah. The, you know, they're like trying to squeeze in yeah. so many syllables. And a tiny pinhead, you know, flies out and it's like the Maldives. <laughs> okay. it's That's where those are. All right. Great. I'm going to remember that. <sighs> wow. uh, All right. Thanks, Tim. That was good. Uh, that was a good one. Uh, George, what do you got? 
Well, I'm going to start by giving you a little unfortunate news I just found, um, and that is that I cannot contact Kurt uh, Miller because he actually passed away oh, last year. Oh, no. I Poor just guy. discovered that by accident. I, and pro probably people at home already found that out while we yeah. were talking about other stuff. So I apologize if people have been yelling in the comments for the last The creator of the Scheme Yaw yeah score. But there is a Kurt Miller in Fort Dodge, Iowa, so there's still still some hope. Oh, there is that. another Kurt Miller oh. somewhere out there. All right. Okay. Anyhow, my cyber video. Last week I showed some Atari commercials that all had the same basic uh, music. Um, Different lyrics, like this. but the melody, yeah. Okay. You're a fly named Yar on a quest in space. You attack the shield of the Kotile's base, but watch out, Yar. He knows where you are. Yar's revenge is new from Atari. Have you played Atari today? With ion zones and evil drones, there's nothing else like Yar's Revenge, the way out space game that's new from Atari. Who else? Have you played Atari today? The good news is there are a lot of other Atari commercials that have totally different songs, and some of them are amazing, and we'll be looking at them in coming weeks, but here are Centipede and its clones type commercials. The centipedes are coming, get your fingers moving fast, and the spider's out to get you. Do you think that you can last? You can shoot him in the middle, he will only break in two, and the fleets are even faster if you look away and through. See the scorpion a-dancing? He can really help you score, but the centipede's immortal keeps coming back for more. Centipede is from Atari, and it's faster than a jet. If you're looking for some action, it's the game you gotta get. Centipede! Wow. Cool stuff. Oh. <laughs> Video time. I love, it when, I love it when things come out of TVs. Yeah. Sounds like Banner of the Opera. Mm -hmm. Very Frank Lloyd Webber. Andrew Lloyd Webber. I was just thinking, like, Lloyd yeah. Webber. Not Frank Lloyd Wright. Andrew Lloyd Webber. Oh, make no that flub. <laughs> it's a great commercial. I'm on board. Great jingle. Where did this play? Um, Centipede from regular, Atari. Regular it TV. Your life. There's another version of this where that thing plays saxophone, but it was like... Ooh. It was like three minutes long. Help! Somebody call an exterminator! This is... I don't even know what to do with this one. Do you know if this is all the same composer? Uh... It's Kurt Miller. Oh. Oh. I don't mind the song. Yeah. Good. Good stuff. But the difference between the graphics and the uh, the commercial. Yeah. What would actually be? Kind of a, kind of a thin Lizzy song, maybe. Mm -hmm. Not bad. Worm War One for your Atari video game system. Worm One of the new War. games of the century. Never heard of that. Century Never heard of it either. But, but everybody was getting into games 20th Century Fox, apparently. I don't know. Um, but keep Worm sending War them in, One. everybody. George at FoundFootageFest.com. People are those sending are, me. Those are cool as hell. Uh, I loved it when you tracked down the guy who did the NES, TLES, the, the yeah. white chocolate. Uh, track down another composer and ask him about uh, these jingles. I want to I want to find out as much as I can about them. I'll look into it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I got a major. Um, like, well, it's another TV related clip. Um, I was watching uh, House of the Dragon, the new Game of Thrones show, and um, the finale aired. And there was um, like a part of the score that I was like. God, you know, this sounds like one of this sounds like a jingle that we've played a lot. And I was like, do I tell my girlfriend this? Or I was like, no, it would be too long to explain, and I'd have to pause the show to explain it, and then it wouldn't even mean anything. And then I kind of forgot about it. But no, uh, a viewer named Luke wrote in and said he noticed it too, and he recorded his TV screen. Oh. 
and uh, I think did a fisheye lens. So when he posted this on YouTube, it wouldn't get flagged. So here's this. I think everybody will recognize it if you're a regular viewer of this show. All right. And until there is one, I have no place here. Yep. I heard it. Here it is again. Corns and <laughs> That's Luke singing along. He said Hillsdale, <laughs> but close enough. Wait, back it up to the first well, one. So I'm back it up play, to the first one. I'm gonna play it again, uh, because I just I ripped the episode. So I'm gonna play it without the fish eye lens here so you can hear it again. I'll Okay. That's exactly it. Yes. I wonder, I wonder if there's a Melinda that works on that show. That's what I'm wondering. I was like, oh, what if it is? And they're like, That's I'm going to sneak wondering. this in. Wouldn't that be the greatest score of all time? So here's that the thing I the... did. So it play, in this scene, they do, they do that refrain twice. And on the second one, I slowed down the Jim's coin jingle and put it side by side. So we can you can see it's the exact notes. So here, here it is. It is our fate, I think, to crave always what is given to another. It's exactly it. It's Jim's That's coins, it. the coin and stamp shop in Madison, the jingle we play over and over again. It was used in one of the most popular shows on television right now. Does Jim have a lawsuit? Should we call up Anderson, our attorney? Does Jim have a lawsuit? I think we might. I think Jim might have a lawsuit no. there. We should we should get like I think we should get like twenty percent of whatever they sue them for. Finders. I think they should. Yeah, finally yeah. a finder's fee. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I think we should maybe we should ask for more actually. Let's talk to Anderson about that. Holy well, shit. I that, that was actually Luke the song. For, yeah, I want to thank Luke for validating me thinking I was going crazy listening to that <laughs> and uh, <laughs> during the show and being very distracted because I really thought I was like, ah, I'm just hearing things. But no, that's exactly it. And you know, when you slow it down, you realize it's exactly the, the notes from Jim's coin. So I seriously think it's a Melinda because what are the odds of like, because those are all the notes and it's all played at the same dun, 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 In that dun. order. You know what I mean? I yes. think there's a Melinda who's working on the show who's just snuck it in. Let's go with that story. I think it's a better story. Well, you know, one of the guys on the Life of the Farm that we worked on the movie <gasps> is doing visual effects for the uh, uh, Lord of the Rings show, the right. Rings of Power. So, you know, there are people in high places in yeah. Hollywood and otherwise who are uh, watch the show. So. Let us know, folks, if you heard it, if you were also driven nuts and couldn't tell your partners about it. Um, but I hope that was cathartic. And uh, we're taking this all the way to the Supreme Court. Yeah. Yeah. Or if you're the person who did it, come out and just, well, they couldn't really be anonymous, right? It'd be impossible. Well, we'll put our heads down and you just come up and tell us and, you know, that way. Yeah, we but know. they're in the credits and then everybody, you know. It's, right. Yeah. yeah it's, well, we need to get to the bottom of this. So, um, yeah. We'll do our homework. We'll hopefully have an update for you next week. Um, and that's cyber videos for this week. Joe, you are just uh, weeks away from your colon cancer screening. Um, yep. How are you feeling about it? Um, I don't know. It's it's actually, I'm doing it the week of Thanksgiving. So it's so far off that I haven't even started worrying about it yet. But I did get the medic. Did, Steve, you got, did you get the, like the, the pro the shake that you have to eat? Like, for the day before oh yeah of course yeah yeah so you, you can't eat anything you have to have like this food that just like it's a laxative and it just makes you shit your guts out for the for the full day it's gonna be a full day of like shitting my guts out right steve i, I wonder about a full day but you're you're not gonna i think it's like in at least eight hours that you want to be not far from a toilet yeah so uh, see, i got uh, that i don't know if you guys have been watching welcome from wreck to wrexham but uh ryan reynolds and uh rob mcelhenny both get their uh um Colon uh, cancer screening. Oh, they I'm gonna watch a polyp it. With uh, they found a polyp with uh, Ryan they? Reynolds, so it's good that everyone's going. Yeah. Did you okay. uh, did Did you have a polyp? No, no. Oh, luckily. I have a feeling they're gonna look in there and they're gonna be like, "Wow, it's a rainforest of polyps in here." But you'd you know, rather like, know. A... You'd rather know. Well, she's a babe, so of course it's gonna ha that's gonna happen. I think I told you then, but uh, my doctor, who also was a babe, complimented me how clean it was. So I did a really great job with the shake and flushed everything out so hopefully you get that same uh, it, compliment and yeah, you bleached right likely. you you did the uh brazilian and you did the Absolutely you bleached not. right no. oh, okay you didn't do any of that no. okay um well i'm definitely gonna do that beforehand Mark. um 
Yeah. Um, all right. Yeah. So, uh, oh, I want to play. Uh, so I'm going to play some uh, colon therapy videos uh, as we uh, lead up to my uh, colonoscopy, colon cancer screening. When you're 45, dudes have to get this. And uh, yeah, so this is a video that, uh, of course, Bob Hedges sent. Uh, this is this is something Bob would send. Uh, what do you say? Right off the bat, enjoy the enclosed laminated instructions. So it, it comes with instructions, and then it has some nice uh, clip art there. Do you see the clip art oh. uh, up there? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. that's a, some nice clip art. Uh-huh. Um, and I I don't know if this is if this is legit or if this is kind of like cuckoo, like uh, what, what's his name, Doctor Schultz, you know, like with with herbal medicines and Quackery. stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. There's a lot of like rubbing on the stomach and doing stuff like that but anyway this is like 30 seconds from this video uh, colon therapy before you start your colon therapy we want to show you some charts of the inside of your body so you can understand why you actually need this therapy all right ron okay so all right, ron we warm it up because it's a little cold now remember one thing too folks is that the bowel works clockwise okay no, it you guys know that it's not <laughs> Come on. No idea. <laughs> the bell works clockwise. Don't don't question Ron. It's dangerously that. close to being a fetish video. Go on. I know. Exactly. That's what I was expecting when I, while I was yeah. watching. I was like, this is going to, is this something? Is this? You folks, is that the bell works clockwise. Okay. Here's 12, 3, 6, 945. Oh, Whoa, 6 got real. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Yeah. They didn't have to go that low. Yeah. They didn't have to go that low. Yeah. Six, nine, twelve, right? Wow, I haven't had this much fun since the eighth day picnic. <laughs> <laughs> since the eighth day picnic? Eighth grade picnic. Oh, eighth grade picnic. Eighth day too. Okay. Oh, All right. But is, is that a being... double entendre? Yeah. Is, it, is she being dirty? I haven't had this I... much fun since the eighth grade picnic. I don't know. I had this much fun since the eighth day picnic. It does sound like eighth day. Yeah. yeah. Like maybe it's a seventh day Adventist on the eighth day they can they can eat a bunch of stuff. Okay. Yeah. Or they can they can go Touch wild themselves. with their they can go yeah. wild with their bowels. Yeah. Oh, okay. Right. Wow, I haven't had this much fun since the eighth day picnic. <laughs> Listen. <laughs> 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 yeah, you, you feel like a little grease pig over here too, right? You feel like a little grease pig over here uh, too. <laughs> so uh, I'm feeling better already about my uh, upcoming uh, colonoscopy. Good. Indistinguishable uh, from porn at that point. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I watched the whole thing. And it's, about everything. Those, are, those are the only two good parts in the whole thing. So, uh, well, hey, uh, one other thing coming up, another fall holiday that you need to survive is Halloween. And we're having our fourth annual VCR party Halloween costume contest dress as a character from a, a, a video we've shown or or uh, from one of our videos from the past and uh, send a picture to us at info at foundfootagefest.com by October 29th. That's uh, the Saturday before Halloween. And on our November 1st show, we're going to uh, show them and, and declare a winner and hand out valuable prizes. I will say, I think we've gotten three or four early submissions and they all are just phenomenal so it keeps getting better and better yeah. every single year and i finally figured out my costume too good. low effort but it's gonna be good okay yeah. all right i'm uh, excited about mine okay good i, I uh, got mine too and I'm, i just there's a part of me that wonders if two of us are gonna go as the same thing and i think that would be hilarious if it happens so uh yeah, we'll I'm not going to tell you what mine is. You don't yeah. tell me what yours is. Yeah, okay. it's low effort, but it's a, uh, uh, but it's a good one. Yeah, okay. I'm excited. All right. Uh, uh, Lenora's Midnight Rental episode two is out, and oh, this show's so good. Like the set on this show, what she built, she built like this uh, video rental store yeah. that opens at midnight, and she got fog machines, and the lighting is perfect, and just but the content is even better. It's a uh, this particular episode is all about horror sequels that were set in space. And the only one that I knew about was Leprechaun. I didn't know about any others, but there apparently there's a shitload and uh, she walks you through all of them. And it's so good. It's my so. preferred way to watch horror movies, actually, because I'm not a huge horror movie fan. I'll watch like the, the cream of the crop, but like 
bad horror movies not my thing but yeah. if somebody's walking me through the, the funniest parts and the most interesting parts exactly so it's a it's a good watch so check that's that out. all i wanted to see yep um what else overlord is playing this saturday at uh berlin and manhattan for that's new right. york melinda's yeah yeah george if, uh, if you're in town stop by you uh may see other people in, involved with the show there that's all i'm saying you'll see other people what with the show who from the found footage festival family there Oh really? Oh, yes. Okay. You're out of town, I know. And, and I'm, I'm not actually. I'm. I was supposed to be in LA this week, but oh. uh, because of uh, cat medication reasons, I'm here. And uh, yeah. So, well, oh, that... by the way, Mr. Nasty, I meant to talk to you about this. Like, right. I'm not well, be able you... to shoot his video. Right, but uh, if you, for any LA Melindas, I I just got another call from uh, Larry Pines. Larry, Mr. Nasty Pines. He's hosting a variety show Thursday, October twentieth at noon at La, Los Las Palmas Theater. Um, Stop by. I feel like the only people him. who are available at noon on a Thursday are us. <laughs> we <laughs> don't have lunch real hour. jobs, but yeah. I don't know. No, that's prime time for comedy shows, for uh, variety shows. That's when you want noon <laughs> on a on a Thursday. So, right. yeah. but stop go by, take this. your picture with him, and uh, I, yeah. I feel like Perry. Perry's a Melinda that uh, has gone to Doctor Scholz's place before. Perry, can, let's ask Perry if he can if he can go there. I feel like he would be. Yeah, amenable right, Perry, to that. It falls on you. Yeah, but if you're not in LA, if you're in Denver or Minneapolis or even State College, Pennsylvania, Chop and Steal, the movie they made about us uh, and our morning news adventures, will be playing there. And we're also um, on tour in December and November with found footage shows. So check out uh, foundfootagefest.com/tour for details on when we'll be appearing live. Um, this, uh, sat Saturday, we're doing Saturday morning cartoons. We're going to watch camp candy. We're going to watch a Halloween episode with Caitlin, and then we're going to play uh round two of mask me another George's game. Oh, it's so good. It's so good. It's genuinely for, fun for EP mode with this week. That's our bonus show for Patreon backers at $10 level. What should we watch? I know we had one request for Whitney's adventure in doll land, which, uh, that might be a slog. Um, uh, and then the Packer Report, which you've played clips from uh, the past few weeks, uh, could yeah. be fun to watch a more extended version of that. What do you think? We, uh, we could do that, or we could also watch Dream Stealers too, or whatever it is. Yeah, I'd we could watch for, that yeah, too. Let's do Dream Stealers because it's a it's a Halloween. It's, it's style. eighteen minutes long. It's eighteen yeah. minutes long. We could watch the whole thing. Yeah, let's um, watch Dream yeah. Stealers too. All right, we're gonna watch Dream Stealers too this Thursday. All right. Um. So. Uh, and, uh, yeah, and ten dollar and, and up. Sign up and uh, sell some new skin for us as well. Uh, that's yep. all part of that. Um, okay, so I finally got my Pam Cap license plate in. Happiest day of my life. I, I feel <laughs> I feel like since like it's all coming to fruition here that I should play the original Pam Cap video so people oh, know what we're sure. talking about. If you're your first a first timer watching this, you didn't get this far in the show. But uh, here here so this is a video. Uh, I don't have it nearby. But it's a uh, a video, uh, a magic video that came free with, I don't know, proofs of pur purchase probably. And you watch it and it teaches you magic. And this particular magic trick for kids, it teaches them how to use a PAM cap. And this is how I got my license plate name. This is, a, this is another long walk here. Here we go. International Home Foods proudly presents Cook Up a Little Magic with Your Kids. Place the nuggets on the baking sheet, spray with all natural Pam cooking spray. So I'll put it under this Pam cap. And just so I don't touch the Pam cap. So I'm going to actually use this Pam cap. Next, we place the Pam cap on top of the quarter. Never gets old. And that's the trick with the Pam cap. Um, all right, here's what uh, I did. I got it. It happened. There it is. I Parked got in Brooklyn. it. That's the back the of my 2010 Nissan Sentra. Pam cap is on the back. And uh, oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, there it is. Wow, it's real. Yep. It all came to mm -hmm. fruition thanks to your generous donations on Patreon. And keep them coming so we can uh, bring shows like uh, Midnight Rental and uh, Strange Tapes uh, and Saturday Morning Cartoons coming. So, Bastard Tapes, all Bastard that stuff. Bastard Tapes, the podcast. Yeah. It all supports yeah. that and our dumb license plates. So we appreciate yep. the support. Um, but mostly not... our dumb license plates. <laughs> that's, that's what the big payoff is for. Right. So I mentioned we've got Canadian muscle hunks um, going out from Scott at Strange Tape Scene. Uh, but until next time, we'll be right back right after these, right after and, these words. And if we had been prepared, we could have done better. 
Uh, please support Sink or Swam either at Seed and Spark dot com or, or follow on Facebook, Instagram, or Vimeo. My nose isn't full yuck anymore. Fridnob, Bradnick, Preserving. <laughs> Dr. Selmer will complete the bunion surgery. Yes, those are his pajamas he's wearing. All right, I gotta go. That's all, that's it. Let me see that one. Rocks are done. Gotta sleep, bye. That's it, that had it done. We did our best. If we'd been prepared, we could have done better. What do you think about Bibra? About what? In a... My nose is for yuck anymore. Ooh. That's all I'm doing. Triodal. Tinkerbell. We'll be right back right after that. And Kurt Polster, the real great guy. Nice, nice. Goodbye. Jim's coins in Hilda.